Yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we sort of did. He gave me the. Do I just hang on to it, or do I? Do you, you want me to sit? Whatever is comfortable. Put it in your right. pocket, your purse, your lap, whatever. Okay. Whatever feels good. There. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's good to see yeah. you. Not really, right? You're it's probably sorry. Yeah. To be well, here. you know, before we are, is the camera already on? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're this. Just so you know, everything we're shooting. Okay. Is this is educational. Okay. 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 Because I, so. I just wanted to tell Dr. Lieberman something. Yes, you can tell. Of him. a personal nature. Well, it's all right. With the camera. With the, with yeah, the camera. Better. Okay. Um, my husband Chuck passed away last oh. August. ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. Oh. How so, long did he live after the, the diagnosis? About 17 months. Yeah, I yeah. think that's about average. I'm so yeah. sorry. And yeah, I've been reading so much about it, and it's just, it's, there's so many people that have it, and they have no treatment for it. There's nothing, I mean, it was just, you're just told, you know, I mean, fortunately, there's an ALS specialist down in Tucson. Mm. At the, the university or yeah, something? Uh, at yeah, at UMC South Campus, uh, mm. Dr. Shearer and Dr. Horick, and mm. um, we saw Dr. Shearer, and um, she got him started with the breathing machine, mm -hmm. and uh, got his permobile ordered, you know, the fancy chair to see with all the, you know, the gadgetry mm -hmm. and everything, and um, he opted not to do the tracheostomy, um, because it just it was not going to be it was going to be pointless. He was going to need 24-hour care. I wouldn't have been able to keep him at home. Yeah. So I wanted to keep him at home. That was yeah. an important thing. So we didn't go that route. And um, he did. He I, I'm not kidding you. He did as much as he could for as long as he could. And I mean, he did just. I mean, he could still stand and transport until like right before he died. I mean, it was just like he was just gone. I mean, it was just you know. My daughter, Alyssa, quit her job. She had a great job at the Attorney General's office up in Phoenix. Yeah. And she lives up here, here in Phoenix, I should say. And, um, was that related to her dad's death? Yeah, she, when she came, well, she came was, down to spend oh, time. Oh, she came down to And to help me. Yeah. I was yeah. his caregiver, so, and, you know, we needed, I needed help overnight. I couldn't get anyone even to come in. You know, it was COVID yeah. was going on and everything, so. Oh, my God, I forgot about he, COVID. Well, he oh. was diagnosed right. Right as, as the whole thing Right as down. it was going down, yeah. So oh, honey, I'm so It was sorry. just scrambling, you know, working. I learned so much, though, about mm -hmm. the medical community. I mean, I learned who all the good guys are, <laughs> yeah. who the bad guys are. And who just doesn't give a shit, you know? I mean, I learned all of, I learned all of the above. And, you know, um, there's nothing like death to train in. Yeah, so I, that's why I didn't know if it was going to come up with the conversation. I thought, you know, I, I didn't want it to be like, whoa, you know? You know so I'm I just a, wanted to I'm put it on the table. So. Yeah, you know me as a spine surgeon, but I'm a neurosurgeon. And yeah. um, we deal with all the neurological disorders. Yeah. ALS, I, I, I have the same impression, which I think I heard in your voice, like, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. It's 2021. You told me I've got it and there's zero treatment. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I can say is it's not like we haven't tried. I yeah. mean, we've spent decades yeah. researching it and... Well, they can't isolate what really, yeah. because every case is different. And it, it is truly, that is the case. Um, because I talked to so many people as I was going through the process. Um, because the ALS clinics, you know, there's three of them mm -hmm. here in Phoenix. There's the one down in Tucson. Unfortunately, it closed during COVID. So we didn't have the benefit of that experience, which was okay because we had all, they put everything in house. Everyone came to mm -hmm. us, which was really um, very nice. Uh, and then we just talked to Sh Dr. Shearer. Um, we saw her a couple times in person. And then we did the telemedicine appointments because there was no point. He, you know, he, yeah. it was just too exhausting. It was too hard to get in there. Well, it was just too exhausting. And then, well, bad enough, we had to go down and get his tube because he was already, he, you know, he had to get on the tube, mm -hmm. you know, the um, feeding tube. And that was, you know, and then periodically he had to get that, that changed out. So, I mean, it was just trying to get him down there and, you know, working against the clock. And he didn't, he had this thing. I said, honey, that the, the, we can take the machine. It was NIV. It's a non-invasive ventilator. So we can take it with us. It has a 24-hour battery life. Mm -hmm. No. He no. didn't want to leave the home. He didn't want. Well, he did, he was he'd leave the home, but he wouldn't want to take it with him. So I said, if you get in trouble when we're driving down the freeway, I can hand it to you and you can put it on. No, 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 no I'll be fine. <laughs> what is wrong with us, man? What is our problem? <laughs> it's so hard. So we just. It well, doesn't matter what's happening. Okay. Like. And in the end of the day, doctor, you know, it was really about him and what was his comfort level, and yeah. that's why we never made it to the clinic here because I wanted to bring him to one of the clinics mm -hmm. early on here because I knew we would get top flight, you know, mm -hmm. 
care and the doctors and treatments and all that kind of stuff. And the ALS um, uh, organization is based here, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Phoenix chapter. Yeah, and, yeah. Or Arizona chapter is based here in Phoenix. So You know, what I see a lot is um, when you're dealing with a terminal illness and someone you love very deeply, it becomes all-encompassing. It's 100% of your world. You're going zero to mm -hmm. 60. You're riding this emotional roller coaster. You lose the person, and then you kind of fall off a cliff. Yeah. Is that what happened to you? Is that why you're here? Are you trying to get better and get, <laughs> get on with it? Well, that's a whole other story. How much time do we have? <laughs> so I am out. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because um, I had the surgery, the laminectomy, yeah. in July of 2019. Right. And I had consulted, uh, Dr. Kenyatta did one mm -hmm. of my consults, yes. and I thought she was very much on target, yeah. and she was saying, try the injections first. That was before I did the injection. Right. And so I said, well, I can have them done in Tucson, because it, it, oh, yeah. it was a pain clinic that I was working with right. anyway. And um, so I went through those, and I was just getting, I was teaching Pilates, uh, you know, like working in a studio. I was, you know, doing really well, but these symptoms just kept progressing of, this really horrible pain, like down, like through my hips and down into my knees and down Both into my feet. Yes, it was okay. bilateral. And I, I just couldn't stand. I mean, because I would do like four or five classes back to back. So it's like, you know, by the time I did my paperwork and all, you know, get everybody checked in and out and clean the equipment and everything, I was probably on my feet for six, seven hours at a time, mm -hmm. you know. And I was just like, I felt like a crippled person. I could barely mm -hmm. walk. And I would yeah. go to walk and it was like I was shuffling along, you know. And so I was just exhausting everything. You couldn't walk because you were weak or because it hurt? Or what What? What do you mean? The, uh, yeah. Yes. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, both. Yeah. 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 I mean, when you say weakness, though, it was almost as if, you know, it, the nerves, they weren't connecting. It wasn't happening. It just wasn't. And it was one side as bad as the other, for sure. The left was worse. Okay, but you know, the right was there. But the right was, was very legit. bad also. And yeah. where I had noticed it first was when I would be driving because we'd had some things going on before then um, where I'd have to go back and forth. My you know, daughter lived in Phoenix, so I'd come mm -hmm. up and see her. And from just my leg just being extended, I would just it would just start to cramp and like lock up on mm -hmm. my hip and then mm -hmm. the knee and then the foot. And so I just went, you know, I just went, doctor, doctor, you know, it was just so... I was contemplating, what do I do? Should I call you guys back? Well, anyway, I had the surgery. I had it done at Barrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rain good. They're great, yeah. Do you know Dr. Laura Snyder? No. Um, she's touted as one of their best, you know, mm -hmm. best of the best, you know. I mean, she did a residency there, and mm -hmm. she decided to stay on as a surgeon. One of the nicest people I've ever met, very knowledgeable. She's like you, you know. Mm -hmm. She's just real personable. She takes the time to explain everything. So... I went in there with my films, and she said, well, you know, I, I, I guess we could go in and clean out, like, that L3-4. And I said, well, they were kind of focused, you know, the orthopede that I saw in Tucson was kind of focused on L4-5. No, she said, you know, it's just more in the nerves in L3-4, and then with the, from the symptoms mm. is what led her to believe. So mm -hmm. that's what happened. I had the surgery. Um, I started bleeding the next day. I, I, had, I had this horrible back pain and she had called and she said get in for an MRI mm -hmm. and she said she called me before I even got home she said you got to come back in for another surgery so went back in um, kept me overnight did the surgery you know drained had a tube in me drained me out went home um, I did okay I started progressing I started mm -hmm. getting better a couple months went by felt a little better we took a little trip you know I was starting to walk again hike again and then I started kind of amping up on my exercise and getting mm -hmm. back into my regular program. And whoosh, I just, like, I hit a wall and I just slid backwards, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. back into the back pain, leg pain was back, it, it had been, and it was kind of intermittent at that point, foot, you know, foot pain. And I, I said to my Pilates, you know, who's an instructor friend who's also a PT, I said, what, what did I do? Did I, did I overdo it? She goes, well, you had a setback of some type. So, uh, you know, it's been months and months of this, of mm -hmm. just, you know, trying to manage it. And then, of course, then COVID set in, and Chuck got sick, and everything kind of went on the back burner. Yeah, that all was And then, that so, I, you know, I just I decided to stay in PT, and I, I had some of the best PT people I've ever worked mm -hmm. with, understood the body, understood exactly what was going on with me, 
they get me to the point, they give me you know, these good you know, initial exercises. <clears throat> as soon as I would start to progress, I'd slide back again. I, it was just like I couldn't get past. Mm -hmm. So couldn't I get over the hump. I couldn't get over the hump. Yeah. So I'm thinking you've looked at my films. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I've got them right here. I'll show you. Um, so let me just tell you what the, what the doctor told me. And I, mm -hmm. That's you know, and um, so I went in to see a neurologist, uh, Western Neurological Associates uh, in Tucson. Mm -hmm. Good reputation. They're the ones that actually found um, Chuck's motor neuron disease from mm -hmm. a nerve test mm -hmm. study they did. And so he said, well, let's try this. We'll do some PT. If it doesn't work, he said, well, we'll take it, get another MRI. So three months later, I'm back. He says, you know, I went in to see him. He said, you know, showed me my films. And he said, uh, I think you ought to see Dr. Baldwin, you know, who's the, ne who's the neurosurgeon there. Hillel? He's still down there? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Who, he's who I've been, I've been conferring with. I see. He's I on see. a leave of absence right now. I don't know what happened. So um, I don't either. I, don't, yeah, I haven't I, talked to him in 20 years. Yeah. But I used to. I knew him when I was well, in training. Well, his personality is really unusual. Very yes, it unique, is. Very unique, isn't it? <laughs> so here we are, and, you know, he comes. He, he was like a half hour late for the appointment, which is okay, because I know they were back-to-back. -back, they were deep, you know. And I'm sitting there, and I'm so stiff from sitting in the chair, and he comes walking in the door. He sits down in the chair, you know, and he's like, one of the first things he said, he goes, he goes, who did that surgery? And I'm like, like, uh, well, which one? And he goes, and I knew which one he was talking about. I said, you mean the laminectomy? And I said, yeah. He goes, who did that? And I said, oh, I had done a barrel brain spine with Dr. Laura Snyder. He goes, what? He goes, <laughs> you know, he's so dramatic. He's dramatic. And he goes, I know her. He goes, I've been on videos. I know her very well. He goes, I can't believe she would do a surgery like that. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's weird. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. He, well, freaked, we'll go... he totally freaked me out. Yeah. So that's kind of where things were left. I was supposed to go back in and answer some more questions with him. I have an appointment with Dr. Snyder. Yes. She does not see. She's already looked at my films. She yeah. does not see anything that warrants surgery, anything, right. Right. anything. Um, but she said she would be willing to meet with me to discuss pain options. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to meet with you and get yeah. your take yeah, yeah. on what you think I have going on. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you. That's a confusing hand to be dealt. And it was right after yeah, Chuck's passing. Yeah, especially when you're dealing with the yeah. loss of a husband. Yeah. And so um, it was like a... But at least it, I thought to myself, well, it made some sense, you know. Yeah. Because... It explained why I never got better, why I have, I'm so unstable at that area. Um, he claims she cleaned it all out. Yeah. It's pretty much empty in there. And he said the disc is now is, is herniated. It's just kind of flopping around in there. And, yeah. And he said he, suggest, he wanted me to get a fusion. And I'm like, I don't think I'm ready for a fusion. I've seen that, I've seen that movie before. It doesn't always have a happy ending. Yes, I know. Um, okay, I need to get two pieces of information. First, I need to ask you some clarifying questions, All right. and then I need to examine you, and then I'd like to show you your films, which I think you're going to find very reassuring. Okay, I'm That's not sure what, what was going on there, okay. but there's no... Maybe he was looking at somebody else's film. I, no, <laughs> I don't know. He was, but I, <laughs> okay. I, I suspect that was a miscommunication. Certainly. Okay. You All haven't right. been harmed or damaged in okay. any way. All right, all. that's good to hear. Yeah. Because I couldn't believe that, it was weird. that something like that would happen there. No. Right, no. Mm -hmm. uh, and it didn't, as far as you can see on this MRI. So we'll, we'll go, I'll show you. I want you to know, to feel in your heart, it's your body. I want you to know what you, what's going on with it. And then let's then we'll talk about your options. Okay. Okay? okay. Um, all right. A uh, couple of clarifying questions. All right. Um, what exactly is the problem right now? And I'm gonna give you multiple choice. Is it back pain? Is it shooting leg pain? Is it hip pain? Or is it weakness and numbness? Which of those is the problem? Not that you don't have them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one, if I could say, okay, you can only get rid of one of the things I just gave you, A, B, C, D, or E, which one would you choose to get rid of? The leg and foot pain. The leg and foot pain. Is it both legs and both feet? Mm -hmm. Is it shooting down from the back like electricity? No. No. Where does it's it come? radiating. It's radiculopathy, but yeah. it's... And it's know. But does it ever start in the back, or is it really all in the foot? Um, 
It can be, it can start in the back and radiate down into the leg and feet. Mm -hmm. um, it can just simply be in the leg and feet, mm -hmm. depending on my level of activity. I see. And if you wake up in the morning, you don't have it, but as you're active, you get it? I or... usually have more pain at night. You have more pain at night. Because I've been laying, you know, in a position. Yeah. When yeah. I get up and move around and start, the circulation starts getting through the legs and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm better. But yeah, sometimes I'll wake up at night and, and it, I'm in a lot of pain. Did you have this problem before the surgery? Yes. You had it before, it just didn't get better. Correct. It's not that it came on after the surgery. No. Okay. It's that a, is correct. It's the problem you had before that didn't get worse. And this is actually a burning in your feet that wakes you up. Yes. Sometimes, yeah. Okay. And it happens through the day, too. But you're not diabetic. No. You're otherwise good health. You're I just had a cardiology check. Everything's great. And I'm in stellar condition stellar for condition. someone my age, yeah. Like a Pilates teacher. <laughs> which should be. Yeah. Which I should be, yeah. Right. Which I want to get back to. I want to get better. I want, uh, to, get, I I want to do more, you, you know? I don't blame you, yeah. <laughs> I love Pilates. It's really cool. Okay. Um, I think that's all the clarifying questions I have. I'd like to check you over. Okay. We'll give PJ a minute to Okay. This move. comes with me, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you put it in your pocket or on your belt? Because I'm going to ask you okay. to walk a little bit. There you go. I know I get... You want me to do it? I know. It's just a clip, isn't it? There it is. Yeah. All right. I did it. Come on over. <laughs> Just um, don't trip on the cord now. <laughs> you're good. Stand, yeah, walk. I oh, know it's awkward. I want you to stand right in front of me. Okay. And what I want you to do is get up on your tippy toes and then walk toward me on your toes. Let me have your hands. Walk toward me on those toes. Hi, 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 hi. Does that feel weak or that feels okay? Feels good. Okay, let's go the other way. But get um, on your heels with your toes up in the air. You can balance on me if you want to and walk toward the desk. Oh, sideways? Yeah. No, so you can walk straight. Yeah, walk toward me. My balance is bad, though. I it's see like that. You're going, to see, you're going to see it's really bad. Yeah. And I am working on that. But your strength is a little, a little worse on the right, or does it feel okay to you? Does it look weaker on the right? It does, yeah. but I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, you're getting it up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, good, good. Um, it's a little awkward, but have a seat right here. Okay. And I'm sorry, uh, face this way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, put drape your legs over oh, this thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't scoot, weigh that much. Scoot toward me. No, you do not. <laughs> and just let your legs relax. Okay. Can you feel me here? Yes. How about here? Yes. Can I have your foot? Is it okay if I take these yeah, off? Yeah, we can take those off. Can you feel me here? Yes. How about here? Yes. How about here? Yes. Pull your foot toward your head. Good. Let's do this one. Yeah. Okay. Can you feel me here? Yep. How about here? Yep. And here? Yep. And bring your foot toward your head. Good. And hold your feet up toward the roof. Hold them up. And try to lift your leg up and up toward the roof. Hold it up. Ooh. God. I'm thinking that should be stronger. Yeah. This is really weak. That's, That's what's weird. weak is the iliopsoas, like your hip flexors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, because I've had pain up. down through that area for like year, a couple of yeah, years now. Yeah. Bring this one up toward the roof. Hold it up. Ugh. Hold it up. Don't hold it up. Cheater. <laughs> Don't be a cheater. Because it hurts. It's starting to lock up. Does it hurt? Yeah. yeah it's the, the muscle's starting to lock. And that's what I was talking to my instructor about because I I been taking classes and I said, I know these muscles are weak, yeah. but, you know, it just... I, they just want to lock up after a while. They just and and it's and and that's why I thought well maybe there's something I had injections in the SI joints. Mm -hmm. And let this relax. Let this relax. Does that bother you? No. And how about that? No. And does this bother you? Let this relax. 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 Oh. Does that bother you? No. And how about that? No. Stand up for a second. And face that way. This way? Yeah, I just want to feel your back. Are you tender? Ooh, you, boy, you're tight. Are you tender in here? A little bit. Yeah. Not really, huh? No. How about here? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Here? Mm-hmm. Here? Mm-hmm. Here? Yep. I mean, is that point tender, or it all feels really locked up? How about out here? Yes. Mm-hmm. And here? Mm-hmm. So the muscle's tight all the way through here. Yeah. 
they're, they're, they're guarding, you know, they're, yeah. I, they're definitely doing that. Can you point to one spot that hurts the most? When, when I get the pain, you know, it'll, it'll usually is right through here. Yeah. Right through there. On both sides? Yeah. It'll just kind of, it'll just radiate across the hips and then it'll come down. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll get this band of pain, but I think this is from, you know, trying to protect, isn't it? I mean, when I get this kind of band, I, sometimes I can stretch on a roller. I feel or like a ball. you're, yeah. But also, I feel like you're, you're really, like not extended up here. You mean I'm cut? Um, if I do this to you, does that hurt? No. Your, there's no pain down no. there. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay, you can sit down. Yeah. I mean, I think mechanically you're pretty Ooh. good. Yeah. The um, there's a lot of muscle spasm, like you're. And you're flexed forward a little bit, like you're stenotic. But let's take a look at your MRI. Yeah, I want to get my... Ta take your time. Let me know. I'll I just want to grab my glasses and like, yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of see them. It's on the screen. Look at us. We're getting old. I'm going to grab mine, too. Yeah. <laughs> can you see the x-ray? Yes. Okay. I can. Can you see my cursor moving around here? Yes. Okay, so this is your x-ray. And you see this normal, beautiful curve in your mm -hmm. back. And this is a really healthy disc on x-ray. See, the bone is the square. And then Where, there's- What level is that? That's really high. That's your five, say. four, three, yeah. two, one. This is your uh, uh, T12L1. Okay. So that's a normal disc where you can't see it because it's cartilage and x-ray mm -hmm. only shows bone. X-ray shows density, but that's, so that's normal. That one's okay, but this is that L12 that mm -hmm. had that big herniation years yeah. and years. Yeah. So you're almost bone on bone there. Okay, that explains. Here's your L23 okay. and it's a little off. Instead of looking like a square edge, we see it as a surface, mm -hmm. which means it's rotated. So you've mm -hmm. got some L23 disc Three fours. Uh, this I'm sorry. This is four five is mostly bone on bone, and five one is bone on bone. Okay. This is you bending. So you notice if you look at the back of this bone, it ends up with the front of that one, and the back of this bone ends up with the front of that one. But the back of this bone is shifted off a little bit. See that tiny yeah. shift there? Yeah. And when you bend your back. Here, five, four, three, your three, four is shifted. And then when you bend forward, that's that first x-ray, five, four, three, your three, four shifts forward, just the tiniest bit. So that's your three, four, mm -hmm. and I assume that's why he's, Dr. Baldwin is talking about fusing you there, is because you have that little tiny bit of movement there. But it's tiny if it's, you know, if it's... Well, it is tiny. And here's your, um, here's 5145, here's your 34. When you're laying down in the MRI, it looks like it lines up pretty well. And when I look at your 34 where you had that surgery, I see um, some soft tissue evidence of the surgery, but I don't see uh, the nerves are in there. Everything's the way that it should be. There's nothing, you know... Mm -hmm. There's nothing going on there that makes me concerned about you okay. or that the surgery was botched or okay. that something was done wrong. That's... That didn't happen. Okay. It looks fine. Okay. It looks the way exactly the Good. way that it should. That's, that's in fact, if you if you told me I had no pain in my back and I saw this same MRI, I would say, oh yeah, she's got no pain. So mm -hmm. MRI is not showing us the pain. It's not showing us anything. Whatever that weird, please put that. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Whatever that misadventure was, let's put it out of our minds. Okay. Um, there are no, there is a couple findings here. Still at your L1-2, you've got a tiny bit of narrowing, not very much. You've got a little bit of stenosis. You've still got the old L5-S1 stuff that you've always had. Yeah, I've always had. Yeah. But you're not really having any symptoms. Your 3-4 looks fine. Your one, two doesn't look bad. You've got that old disc and you've got a little swollen joint there. Mm -hmm. There's one more thing I wanted to see. Yeah, there's, no, there's not a lot of swelling in the joints at your three, four, where you have that tiny bit of movement. So I'm not, 
overly arthritic yet, right? No. No, no. that's good news. No. Because I, mean, I thought, well, maybe this is just good old-fashioned arthritis. That it is. Turned... It is arthritis. Yeah. Arthritis is the underlying issue. So yeah. um, your MRI shows uh, lovely lady, lousy discs. We've always known that. That's the core problem. You, they threw in a little table salt of arthritis and the joints are, are not that great. Okay, but you've done a great job maintaining your core muscles the best you can and keeping it up. But that's, that's the situation with you. Okay. Any questions about these images? No, you know, I mean, when I remember when they showed them to me, they, everything looked appropriate, but it does. You know, it um, does look appropriate. Um, I think now comes the important question, which is what next? Yeah. You know, here we are, um, lousy back, right? Mm -hmm. Tried, tried, been through a lot, yeah. now, three surgeries. Yeah. Been through a lot, tried to move forward, having trouble. Mm -hmm. um, is there a surgery which can correct you, which will uh, eliminate your problems and put you back on the right track? No. Mm -hmm. um, there, I, I understand why someone would see that shift in the bones and think fusion, but I do not believe that's likely yeah. to substantially improve your condition. I don't think so either. I think as someone who um, has an experience with advanced exercise, I would consider Pilates an advanced exercise. You have, the, you have access to a mindset and, an, and knowledge base which will allow you to move forward with exercise instead of um, surgery and that it's not, it's not required for you to feel comfortable. Okay. There are enormous risks in additional surgeries. Every, every time you have spine surgery, the likelihood of it helping goes down and the likelihood of it hurting goes up. Mm -hmm. And you're now, in the, you're upside down on your risk profile. Mm -hmm. So I would strongly, uh, I wouldn't strongly recommend no surgery, but I would say, uh, and I don't do surgery anymore, so I've, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I got, I don't know if I told you I got tremor from my mom. I, Is that what happened? Yeah, I inherited uh, an essential tremor, so I can't operate. Um, I can do al almost, I can do a lot of things, but there's no way I can do surgery. I, I can, actually, I can hardly write. And I, really? I had to oh, give gosh. up soup. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness. Can't, uh... With both hands or are yeah. you left-handed? No, I am left-handed, but it's both hands. Um, but so be that as, I guess my point is no, under no circumstances yeah. would I be your surgeon, but I wouldn't recommend surgery for you mm -hmm. even if I were. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't think it's going to help you. I think you've been through hell yeah. and it's time to take a deep breath and find out what is the new normal for you. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the new normal is not the old normal. Oh, I know that. Yeah. I can't, I can't go back to the way things were. <laughs> I can't. You know? well, and in a way, I don't really want to because now my children are grown. Mm -hmm. That's opened up, you know, a whole new realm for me. Yeah. Unfortunately, I lost my father. I mean, you know, because we had things we wanted to do together. But mm -hmm. now I'm like, well, I can still do things, you know. I just bought a house in northern Idaho. Really? Congratulations. Yeah, from the same point. Oh my gosh! Just get out of the heat in the summer. Yes, ma'am. I hear it's getting really yeah. fun, really crazy out there in the summer. I'm gonna get a boat. <laughs> I think you know. I so mean, I'm gonna I've... do things that I've always wanted to do. Chuck would never have wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think to myself, you know, I would have just been, you know, we would have been the little retired couple, probably taking our little, you know, and rather than some big adventure. And I'm, I'm kind of not. I'm ready for a big adventure. You know. Yeah, just, you yeah. are, and your back is fine for it. I just have to be cautious. I know. You know, I, you were you were teaching five Pilates classes a day. I don't think you can do that. I can't. Oh, I'm not. Uh, and you should. I'm not. like you. I'm, I've, I'm retired from Pilates. That's teaching. right. But at you, least for now. But you, know? you could go for a walk. No, you, oh you yeah. Could, you could go for a daily walk. You could get to the point where you had enough yeah. um, enough reserve in your walking that you could start hiking. Mm -hmm. And once you're hiking, who knows what you can do? Yeah. I mean, you just need to kind of find your new normal. Yeah. The, the problem that I see people get into is when they apply the old standards to what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So I just saw a guy a few days ago who um, used to, uh, had a septic knee, used to walk five miles oh, a day, yeah. decided he wanted to exercise, so he went and walked five miles. Blew a big disc out of his back. Like you can't, oh, you can't wow. go out and walk, you can't go out and teach five Pilates classes. Yeah. But you gotta respect your body and respect yourself and find the new normal for you. Mm -hmm. When you lose a spouse of of that many years and that close to your heart, yeah. it's a big transition, and it takes at least a year to even know where you're at. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're in the beginning of this. I mean, I, I think yeah. you're doing the exact right thing. Find some new dreams that yeah. they're not, he's not going to be in them anymore, but you sure are. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what complicated, you know, was everything that was happening at one time with COVID, you know. Yeah. I mean, and just being isolated, being in the house all the time. But then I had to be there anyway because I really, you know, I didn't want to go out anywhere, you know, to, to put him at risk, you know. So I just yeah. didn't see anybody or right. do anything. And, and then I was dealing with this. And, you know, um, so, you know, I think you're right. I think it's going to take some time. Um, you know, but I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, if, if you're telling me that, hey, everything looks pretty good to me and, you know, uh, I don't really think I need any kind of any additional injections, maybe a little more PT of, or and or Pilates. I mean, I learned so much from my Pilates people. I mean, yeah. even though I know a lot, you know, I go to a class and I work one-on-one -on -one with someone and she points out something that I, you know, that I didn't, about my body that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and it's yeah, really, that's right. it's really cool. I There's, mean, yeah. I think PT is really helpful for mobilization and Pilates is really helpful for strengthening and mm -hmm. you need to get stronger. Your problem is not mobilization, it's strength. So I, you know, your, your joints are arthritic. PT is, PT is not the way to go right now. Okay. Yeah. Pilates, even yoga. If you if you venture down that evil aisle, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you did. Yoga's tough though. No, yoga's I mean, weird. Yoga is hard. It's yeah, really yeah, really hard. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's like there's people who love mushrooms and people who are afraid of mushrooms. Yeah. There's people who love yoga, and then there's everyone else. Like, <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. um, find what works for you. I would uh, I would recommend that you disengage from all healthcare, including PT. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't need any more surgical opinions, injections, drugs, uh, anything. You need wellness okay. and strengthening. Okay. I um, do acupuncture. Uh, great. I've, I've, yeah. You know, I've been doing yeah. that for quite a while. I do, you know, massage therapy. Um, yeah. How often do you get massage? Um, probably about once every other week. Massage, the more the better. Um, acupuncture um, is great, especially for flare-ups. Um, Traction would be an inversion would be mm -hmm. really good for you. I know those are tables. Those, you know, yeah, I've thought about getting one, but I'm all on the fence because I know someone who had an accident on one. One of my, you know, clients. Or really? Her husband was oh. hanging from one, and he, the, the thing slipped and he went and crushed a vertebrae. And oh my God! I've one. never heard of that. Quadriplegic. No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That is awful. When I heard that, I thought. Because I had actually gotten one, and I didn't like it. It wasn't the right one for me. I said, I know it's not the right tension. I just, I didn't even take it out of the box because I thought uh, it's not for me. But I used to do it at a studio um, here in Scottsdale. They had a table, and inversion table. And I think it's good, but, you know, I could do it just up against the wall or even, you know, like, like the yoga things where, you know, you do the handstands and stuff. Yeah. Even if you just lay on your back and you put your feet up, that's right. inversion. That's put inversion. your legs up against the wall. Or, that's an or inversion lay thing. over and let your back stretch. I or, do it on the ball. Ex or the ball, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think those are the kinds of yeah. things you should be doing once yeah. or twice a day for five to ten minutes. Okay. And Because um, that's what I am doing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I, glad to hear that. I mean, that reinforces. I think you're on the exact right track. Yeah. I would disengage. I would, I would try to view this as a vote of confidence. Okay. And um, um, you're at ground zero. You're halfway through the beginning of your morning for mm -hmm. your husband. Yeah. It's a, this is a slow burn. Um, yeah. This is a slow burn. So you, but you're, man, you're on your way. Yeah, well, I appreciate your time, and it's so it's such a pleasure to see you again. You too. You know? Yeah, it's you're been on so YouTube. Long. Yeah. I can't be a doctor oh, anymore, gosh. but I can play one on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. No, I've I've watched lots of the videos on YouTube. Oh, good. good. I have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, lots of them, yeah. and. And then, you know, I watch your guys's and then you see, then it's like, oh, there's this one and then there's this one and there's, you know, and then mm -hmm. it's like a whole new world, you know. It is a whole new world. <laughs> we're trying to, that's, that's actually, we're trying to get good content out there and mm -hmm. use our, we, I, we have 30 surgeons in our surgery centers now, mm -hmm. we're trying to get them to, and they're awesome, mm -hmm. we're trying to get them to be like the, um, get the right information out there. Mm -hmm. It's harder than, harder than you would think. Than, yeah. Than and, they, and they do all different specialties, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything. One, you know, everything, everything from shoulders and hips and knees. and. Man, orthopedic right. surgery has become like a one-joint surgery specialty. Mm -hmm. You kind of, even the, even the sports people who do knee and shoulder, mm -hmm. most of them kind of either do knee or shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> they do both, but uh, it's, it's really gotten so specialized. Mm -hmm. um, 
And my goodness, all these robots and the joint replacements, really cool. And mm -hmm. there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, my mom had a mutation and had to have joint replacements. Oh. And she used to go down to Tucson for them. Really? Yeah. At, at the U of A? Uh, not at the U of A. There was a guy in practice who my mom okay. came to the conclusion was the best guy in the state. And so okay. she would go down there. As a little kid, I would go to T. They kept you in the hospital for a month back then. Oh, my gosh. Like when I was five, my mom had her first joint surgery. We'd go down there to visit her on the weekends. Wow. So I remember that, that was my association with Tucson until medical school. So that school. hasn't carried on to you. You haven't had any issues. Have it was 50-50 with the genes. Yeah. Oh, with the genes. I, I didn't, didn't get it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. My, brother's, uh, my brother got it. Oh. Uh, he's running for governor. You should vote for him. He's going to. All right. Right on, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to win. I hope. Huh. A Republican ticket or no? Democrat? I'm a Republican, but he's a Democrat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I told him, why don't you just become a Republican? You're in Arizona. So is he on the independent? Like a, like a no, no. He's a, he's a Democrat. He's a, oh, I mean, but what? How is he going to run on a ticket? I mean, on the as a he's running as a Democrat. As, as on the Democrat yeah, yeah, yeah. ticket. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's um, okay. Yeah. He's uh, you, well. I just you'll see his name. Okay, I'm um, sure I will because I get the yeah. you know I get the ballots. They're still mailing them out. They're saying right. We're still going to get them. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's next year the election. So yes. So we got time. We got. We got yeah. And I'll, yeah. I'll look for him for sure. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah. This office actually used to be their campaign headquarters. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, you. But you guys have been here for a while. Phoenix Spine. You're, We've been here for a few yeah. years now. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, almost five years. Yeah. 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 Right. Well. Specifically. Yeah. This. Oh, office. this office. Yeah. Okay. When and they then first started. Expanded. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, well, I'm so glad to see you. Call yeah. me if you need me. Um, I'm always available, but I really think, um, and I'm so sorry, uh, but I really think the thing